Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena episode 32 for Wednesday, February 11th, 2015. Keyboards. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by SmartThings. SmartThings lets you monitor, control, and automate your home from wherever you are using your smartphone. Right now, SmartThings is offering Android App Arena listeners 10% off any home security or solution kit and get free shipping in the U.S. when you go to smartthings.com slash twit and use the offer code TWIT at checkout. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. I always talk on this show about the cool ways that Android users can customize their devices to their own liking. This is particularly true when talking about features of the device that you use literally every day, multiple times a day. The touchscreen keyboard on a device is interacted with constantly, as you already well know. And as such, it only makes sense that people have a choice as to what features they want included with those keyboards. Nowadays, keyboards aren't just for typing words. They can actually predict what you're about to say. They can insert images into text fields. They can say nothing more than Hodor with every key press. That last one certainly has some limited value, but hey, everyone has different needs, so I won't judge. Anyways, I'm forgoing this week's big app at the end of the show to bring you a supersized showdown of five keyboard replacements that absolutely qualify, in my opinion, as the best of the best. So let's take a look at a few of those right now. Why not starting with, by all accounts, the big kahuna? Because when Google has an app for any major category like this, you better believe people are using it. Google Keyboard was one of Google's most recent breakout apps that's installable on practically any Android device running Android 4.0 or higher. While some might see Google Keyboard as a bit plain, I see that as its primary strength. No fancy tricks, no bells and whistles, just a plainly designed keyboard that brings some of the core features that everyone looks for in a keyboard replacement app nowadays. You have four themes to pick from, basically dark and light themes. There's gesture typing that allows you to opt for dragging your fingers between letters on the keyboard as opposed to just tapping them out in succession. Google wasn't the first to bring this game-changing feature to its keyboard app. We'll get into that app in a few minutes, but I actually have excellent results using Google's approach to swiping. A big part of the success of this feature is text correction and prediction. Google Keyboard learns over time how you communicate and offers up corrections based on your history using the app and other Google services. So over time, it gets smarter, making you more efficient. Full emoji support is baked in. And if you prefer to use your voice instead of your fingers, voice entry is there as well. It's a bit plain, but totally does the trick. Check out Google Keyboard for free in the Play Store. Next, we have Swipe, one of the reigning powerhouses in the third-party keyboard world. You've probably seen or at least heard of Swipe at some point. Nuance, the company that develops the app, has deals with hardware manufacturers to pre-install the keyboard on devices right out of the box. Swipe's also one of, if not the first keyboard to introduce the gesture swiping method of text entry that we just saw in Google's own offering. Most keyboards do this in some way nowadays, but I have to give credit where credit's due because at least for me, it has redefined how I prefer to type on small screened mobile devices. And thankfully, with all that history, the swipe approach to typing is incredibly fast, accurate, and dependable. Swipe also includes some fancy swipe Easter eggs when you swipe into the keyboard from the swipe icon in the corner. It does things like copy, paste, there's searching for the highlighted word or phrase on Google, and there's a whole list of more. Emoji support is, of course, built in. So, for example, if I type farm, 
I get a number of recommendations and, oh yes, a tractor image. Just what I needed. There's a full theming engine with free and paid themes. And long pressing on the numeric button pulls up a number of keyboard layouts so you can do things like split the keyboard on larger devices. You can also enter handwriting mode, which is what it sounds like, but I didn't have the best luck using this feature personally. And finally, signing up for a free account enables backup, restore, and cloud sync, so all of your devices pull from your own personal dictionary, among other things. Overall, Swipe packs in a ton of extras and has Easter eggs for more advanced users, too. Swipe is free for 30 days, with a paid version for 99 cents in the Play Store. And then there's SwiftKey, an app that I've been using on my devices for years now. SwiftKey was once a paid app, and I was always happy to recommend them to everyone because, well, it's worth the cost to me. But recently, they switched to free. That means no barriers to a top-of-the-line keyboard replacement. Of course, SwiftKey still has to make money, and their current business model has them offering the recently launched SwiftKey store from inside the app. There you'll find an abundance of themes for the keyboard from straightforward gradients to the characters of Frozen to graveyards with ghosts and bones. Okay, so there's definitely some cheese in there, but hey, people love to theme, and some people are willing to pay for that kind of customization. SwiftKey, like Swipe, has a cloud service that keeps everything synced between multiple devices using the keyboard. There's personalization of predictions that can be pulled from a number of installed apps and synced on a regular basis. That helps to keep text predictions close to your own writing style. SwiftKey Flow is the gesture typing engine here, and it has some time-saving features as you get more accustomed to using them. For example, you never really need to lift your finger off the screen when you hit the end of a word. Just swipe from word to word and flow detects the words and splits them up automatically once you're done. You can also glide your finger through the space bar to register that in the series. This is all great when you remember to use it. Personally, I have a hard time thinking about what I need to say fast enough to do this for very long sentences. SwiftKey offers multiple screen layouts, similar to Swipe. There's support for more than 800 emojis and more than 80 languages, including up to three languages that SwiftKey can support at one time. Find SwiftKey for free in the Play Store. All right, so uh, things are a little different this week. I'm holding off on naming a winner because I still have some more keyboards to feature in this episode. And before I get there, let's uh, pay a few bills. Let's thank the sponsor of today's episode. That is Smart Things. Let me tell you about CNET's highest rated smart, smart home system. It's called Smart Things. And Smart Things allows you to do some crazy awesome things. You can monitor, control, and automate your home from anywhere using your smartphone. Now your lights, your locks, your thermostats, home security, it's all connected through a single app. You don't need a different app for every product. And this is the hub right here. This is kind of the brains of the Smart Things universe. And you can see right behind me here just all of the components that plug into this. This uh, connects to your wireless network and uh, kind of controls your smart home and all of these different modules. Uh, you don't need a different app for every product. It's, there's intuitive controls that allow you to set the rules on your smartphone through their free iOS, Android, and Windows phone apps. With smart things, you can customize the way your smart devices talk to each other. So all of these can communicate with each other in different ways. You can tap good night on your phone and the lights will turn off, the thermostat will adjust, the doors will lock. You can set your lamps to brighten each morning at sunrise or when you want to wake up. Even keep your home protected with Smart Things Home Security. This is a motion sensor right here, so you can do motion detection. Uh, there's water detection and so much more. Enable your speakers to broadcast dogs barking if there's motion outside the house. You can set a camera to take a series of photos. Uh, when you have undetect you know, unwanted motion or entries detected, have your doors recognized when you when they're closed and unlock themselves as you walk up. There's, as you can see, so many ways to customize your Smart Things home. And uh, you know, talking about accolades here, Smart Things was actually named CES 2015 Editor's Choice Award. Uh, so pretty cool stuff there. Smart Things has something very special going here, and uh, you should get in on it. To get you started setting up your smart home right now, Smart Things is offering Android App Arena listeners 10% off any home security or solution kit, and you'll get free shipping in the U.S. 
Just go to smartthings.com slash twit to check it out for yourself. Don't forget to use the offer code twit at checkout. And we thank Smart Things for their continued support of Android App Arena. Very cool stuff. All right. As I said earlier, in lieu of checking out a big app, I'm going to continue looking at a few more big name keyboard replacements. These are maybe a little bit less lesser known. The first three that we featured are definitely the biggies uh, in the category. These last two are a little different. Let's take a closer look at those in this second half of this week's best of the best. Next, let's take a look at Flexi. Flexi holds the Guinness Book of World Records title for world's fastest smartphone keyboard because what the hell, that's a thing? I had no idea. Anyway, Flexi doesn't include any of that gliding finger mumbo jumbo. It's all about tap typing. The letters on the keyboard are big, they're bright, by default, of course, with a number of theming options that allow you to get a color combo that speaks to you. You can also purchase any number of theme packs, including, yes, another Frozen theme. There are three size settings for the keyboard, as well as the ability to hide the space bar to save even more screen real estate. Get rid of the space bar. Why would anyone want to do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Flexi has a bunch of gestures that take care of things like that once you get used to using them. For example, swiping far right to far left deletes the previous word. Swiping in the other direction adds a space or a period. Swipe down to cycle between word corrections and up to revert to the word it thinks you misspelled. And two fingers down actually toggles that space bar row. The more you use it, the better you get at remembering to do it, saving time while typing. One of the most powerful features of Flexi, though, is a newly added feature called Flexi Extensions. These are deeper ways that you can customize your Flexi experience. You have three slots for adding extensions to, and they do some interesting things. GIF Keyboard extends the emoji section to include animated GIF browsing from inside the keyboard app. Very cool. There's Rainbow Pops that cycles through the colors of the rainbow with every tap of your finger. There's a launcher from the keyboard, a number row that can be added, and there's even an invisible keyboard. That one's a bit brutal. If three extensions isn't enough for you, you can purchase more for 99 cents each. Flexi may not include a swiping finger function, but for tap typers, it's pretty original and very fast. Find Flexi spelled F-L-E-K-S-Y for free and for $1.99 in the Play Store. Finally, let's wrap this up with a keyboard that tries to redefine how you type on your mobile device. Minuem Keyboard takes all those rows of characters and smushes them down into one single row down at the bottom of your screen. By doing so, it frees up all that extra screen real estate, allowing the app to shine through more than the keyboard that takes up half the screen. It's still meant to be a tap typing affair, but mixed in there are a few gestures to make things easier, similar to Flexi tap and hold at the bottom part of the keyboard and a few zones will appear. You can slide to any one zone to do things like activate voice input, delete a character, add a space, or enter to the next line. Toggling sloppy typing mode activates a more advanced auto correction that definitely takes your rushed entry and turns it into something legible. Yes, emoji is built in, and in terms of customization, there are your standard settings around size and position of the keyboard, allowing you to dock the keyboard either to the left or to the right side of the screen. There are also theming options that allow you to customize things a bit, including a few adaptive themes that are pretty cool. They change colors either throughout the day or to match the color of material design apps. Minium doesn't have any cloud settings for syncing your dictionary and prediction information, but it does include a backup and restore option that will save that information to your local device. And switching from the full keyboard layout to the flattened layout is as easy as swiping up or down so you can choose your method in the moment. Minium absolutely looks and performs different from the rest of the pack, and it's worth checking out for that reason alone. Many people swear by it, so don't count it out just because it looks funny. Try Minium for free for 30 days or completely unlocked for $3.99 in the Play Store. 
All right, so by the way, uh, Flexi's world record, which I didn't know existed, fastest smartphone typing, whatever it was, that was achieved in 18.19 seconds by typing out the following uh, phrase, quote, the razor tooth piranhas of the genera Cerasalmus and Pygocentris are the most ferocious freshwater fish in the world. In reality, they seldom attack a human. Typed on a smartphone in 18 seconds. It's like the touch typing equivalent of she sells seashells she sells seashells by the seashore. Okay, that's really hard. Um, all right, so this has been a supersized best of the best. We saw five keyboards. I need to select one keyboard as my favorite of the bunch, and it's tough because, as usually is the case with best of the best, each of these bring their own strengths to the table, and that's kind of the beauty of it. To summarize what we've seen, we've seen Google Keyboard, Swipe, Swift Key, Flexi, and Minuum. I give Min Minuum kudos, obviously, for breaking the mold. It just doesn't do it for me personally, but I know a lot of people really swear by it and love it uh, for being original. And, you know, some people find it much faster. So uh, definitely don't count it out. Flexi is fantastic for the touch typist. Um, but I like that swiping action when I type, and it would be hard for me to not have that option. Uh, so for me personally, Flexi is a no-go. I have to give swipe credit because for some reason, I've dismissed that app for the longest time. I'm not sure if it's because of all the deals they've made with OEMs, and I just kind of figured, like, oh, they're making deals, whatever. But they kind of all make deals nowadays, and uh, it had been a while since I played around with it. But I definitely walked away from the review uh, with a renewed respect for it. Certainly packs in the features. But I have to hang in there with SwiftKey. I don't know if it's a personal preference because I've been using it for so long or what, but um, I'd say, you know, it's the one I keep installed on my phone at all times. And that's because, uh, you know, its prediction algorithms are top notch. That's really the, the key functionality uh, that I love of SwiftKey. It's just really great at predicting words. I sometimes shift between SwiftKey and Google Keyboard, and I always end up going back to SwiftKey because what can I say? It just knows me better. And not to mention, it was long worth paying for. So its current price tag of free makes it a steal. Uh, so that's it. I hope I hope you found a new keyboard for your device or maybe renewed your faith in the one you're already using. Uh, and that is it for this week. I love hearing from you guys. Your recommendations are super helpful to me. So please, as always, send your favorite apps, new categories, whatever you got to arena at twit.tv. I have so many emails from you guys and it's great to go in there and, and pick from there. I want to do another, um, another viewer uh, feedback uh, episode here soon. There's also a subreddit for the show where I post categories and ask you to tell me about your favorite apps and why you love them so much. If you have input on some of your favorite apps, head on over to Android app arena reddit.com you can share them with me and the other Redditors that'll see it there. You can follow me on Google plus for my random Android related ramblings. I also host a live viewing party of each week's episode where I'll be on set to answer any questions you might have about the apps in the show or really anything related to Android. Happy to do it. That happens every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific following Tech News Tonight at live.twit.tv. And of course, if you missed that live taping, don't worry. Every week's episode appears on the site. Details for every way that you can find the show can be found at the show page. That's twit.tv slash arena. All right, that is it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. We'll see you next week. My name is Jason Howell. I'll see you soon in the arena.